Greetings, Mind Crafters, and welcome to another exciting Mindcraft conversation. My name is Kimberly Quinn. I'm here with little Giovanni. He's here. He's somewhere. Anyway, he's right here. And we are here to talk about, actually, what we're going to talk about is I had no intention of doing a video today. I just had my phone in my pocket, and I came up from where we live, which is not far from these amazing woods. And it's just wet in our yard, which happens a lot up here because of the elevation. Because it's elevated where I am right now. Uh, maybe it's not obvious, but I'll just tell you that. So we have confectioner sugar, powdered sugar everywhere in the woods. And it's just breathtaking and amazing. I've already done my whole spiritual routine and uh, all that. I thought, wow. Because I was sort of flooded with thoughts of, there he goes, speed dogs. I was sort of flooded with, I, with this thought of ringing in the new year. You know, with keeping our minds open to everything and attached to nothing. It's super Buddhist, but it's just, it's sort of in my head right now. And, you know, really keeping our minds open. Because obviously without an open mind, or let's, let's just say in the positive sense, with an open mind, there's an opportun opportunity for all kinds of growth. And I think even when we think we're being open, I mean, it's true for me, it happens sometimes, right? I'm thinking especially when it's politics, but it can be anything. People are kind of nodding and smiling, like, I'm hearing you, I'm protecting, you know, I'm, I'm really being that listener. But in, in their heads, like, silently, oh, I know I'm really right. I'm just, and it's patronizing. And you aren't really, like, learning anything, right? So, I don't know, for me, I mean, it happens. It happens to us because I think we are kind of inclined to think that we're right. And whether we are or we aren't, we can still learn. Obviously, we can still learn from people who have a whole different perspective than we do. It's not about even changing our minds. It's just about getting where they're coming from and then leaving it there maybe I don't know but keeping our minds open you know to new information is really the key to like you know growth right otherwise it's same 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 all the time and that's also not only are we not growing but it's boring I mean really if, imagine if everybody had the same perspective in this world it'd be so dull dry white toast boring okay and then the other thing is being attached to nothing so keeping our, our minds open to everything and attached to nothing. And so <clears throat> that is also super Buddhist because when we attach to outcomes, we've talked about that. When we, you know, like this, this wedding has to be exactly that way. This trip has to be exactly that way. This job has to be exactly that way. I've got this planned out and the only way I'm going to be happy and it's all good is if it works out the way I want. And, and that, you know, we don't want that. Or we can also attach to outcomes as far as like in a lesser level, not maybe an event, but this, this meeting is going to go this way. And I'm going to get that promotion or whatever. And when we have our our own happiness attached to stuff that's out here, whether it's planning a trip, a wedding, somebody was snarky and we're attaching to that behavior, and we, we allow it, we allow, the words allow, we allow it to ruin our whole day, spiral down. Attaching this to outcomes that are out here, whether they're positive, negative, or somewhere in between, puts our needs for happiness, for our day to go well, for whatever like that, out here in the hands of somebody else and, and other people and other circumstances. And that isn't going to be any kind of consistent way to be happy. That's for sure. So we want to bring that stuff back in the living room because when we bring our, you know, um, our needs, you know, fulfill our own needs for happiness on the inside, we can walk through anything and, and it's right there. We just can go right back, you know, win from within, as I say frequently, right? Um, because we don't want to be attached to stuff out here. And the other thing, is it Minecrafters are on an authentic path, authentic journey to be in alignment with our true selves. That means, and our authentic selves are always there. We just occasionally get pulled out by the ego, right? We get p pulled out by the ego and seduced by the ego because it's such a quick fix, you know, getting that approval, you know, getting the, you know, all the kudos. Yeah, that's all ego stuff. The authentic self does not need any of that. <clears throat> right, G? Totally. He's getting some good smells out here. It doesn't mean it doesn't feel good to have that stuff. The authentic self, you know, if somebody says, oh, you did a great presentation. Oh, what, you wrote a great book. Wow, I like how you handled that conversation with that difficult person at work yesterday. That all feels good, but the difference is that the authentic doesn't need it or go looking for it versus someone who's being, you know, sort of wrapped up in being ego-driven. They, they're really getting their good feels from that. And the authentic person just doesn't need the good feels. Feels good, but we don't need it. Big difference. So we want to keep our, we want to keep, our, our minds open to everything, attached to nothing, and bring all bring that stuff in. With not oh, another thing I had to clarify because I was thinking of another another example of the of the detached thing because detachment again super Buddhist. It's also 
um, a thread of the 12-step program too because sometimes people we love can be doing some really bad behavior. And we love them. We're not judging them, especially when it's addiction because no one, you know, when they're five years old in kindergarten sitting on a little cute little mat say, gee, I can't wait to grow up and be a heroin addict or and break into my family's stuff and take that, you know, like that's a severe example. But that's when another example of detachment when that works really well and the 12-step programs has that as a thread because with addiction, good people, because addiction is more powerful than the sun, right? Good people can get swept up in that in that disease and, and do, do things that are not in alignment with their best self. And so we can love people and still detach. We can love people and still detach. And so that was like a more extreme example, but I wanted to throw it in there because there's the, there's the every more everyday regular examples of also just detaching from snarkies at work. I mean, everybody's got some. There are politics everywhere, no matter how good. I, I work at a wonderful, you know, Champlain's a wonderful community. And, you know, you can encounter politics once in a while. Thankfully, it's not as often there it could, because, it, you know, it's such a good spot. But no matter how good it is, there's nowhere that's perfect. And you don't want to attach to people's snark or people's manipulative dynamics or anything because then we just do like this, right? So when we bring that stuff in... Then we have, it gives us control, autonomy, and we are definitely, you know, it brings our our, uh, our own, um, it brings it in so that we are in charge of our own happiness. Which, that's what I'm saying, because happiness is our choice, our responsibility, and, uh, and that's how it is. You know, it's just how it is. And so we want to win from within and not, have, not be attached out here. Okay, so that is my wish for all of you in 2024 is to uh, have your mind open to everything for personal growth, new information, new people, new circumstances, new travel, new all of it, and then uh, be attached to nothing. Awesome. So Giovanni and I would like to wish you a very, very happy 2024. This is Kimberly Quinn and Little G signing off from the notch at Northern Vermont, that beautiful brook babbling away. Have a mindful, grateful day.